to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local sure national real estate expert yes. and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media, this is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest, Rob Von Esch is with us. Welcome. Thanks again for having me. Always a pleasure. Glad to have you with us. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Got to look at these celebrations of the day as we do every day. Uh, national, what the heck? <laughs> Got to love this one, National Multiple Personality Day. I'm not even going to go anywhere. Anything I say with that one could only get me in serious trouble because I've been known to have multiple personalities, bad and worse. Uh, let's see what else we have on here. National Cheese Doodle Day. I looked at that one. I said, what the heck is a cheese doodle? Well, it's kind of like a cheese puff. So if you like that one, I think we'll just stick being that there is uh, nothing too exciting here in our celebrations. I will remind you we are still in our Girl Scout cookie triple play. Think about that one. I can't say what Girl Scout troop it is that we are going to be helping out this year just because I was told that it could get them in trouble because I'm actually promoting them instead of the girls selling them. Don't know how that works. The bottom line is we get to buy a lot of cookies from the girls. Then their commitment to me is that they will deliver them to the Orange County Family Justice Center for the benefit of women, battered women and children. And the third part of that is no calories for you or me because... Right, they're delivering them to somebody else. We never see them. So you just send the money to us, Venmo or Square Cash, PayPal, any of those ways. We get the money to the Girl Scouts and they take it from there. No work on your part. Let's check and see what's going on in the markets today. We watch the Dow Jones. Holy cow, it's been a very, very volatile day today. Watched it start out the morning down about 100 points. Now we're up about 200 points. Volatility is the key. Might, maybe it has to do with the discussion of tariffs. We'll see. We'll chat about that in the mortgage minute a little bit later on. But we are looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 208 points. Oil up $1.41 a barrel. I don't want to even mention, I'm not even going to look at what gas prices are because you know in Taxifornia we're probably about a dollar a gallon higher than the rest of the country. If you like to go and do any kind of recreational activities, boating, motorcycling, you're going to be paying a lot more this year. Looking at the 10-year treasury, up almost seven basis points, which we know what that's going to mean for mortgage rates. I think my friend... Ow! Yeah, exactly. Not going to be pleasant. Hey, did you watch the Holier Than Now Awards last night? I didn't either, and apparently, looks like a lot of people didn't. As soon as you see the Jimmy Kimmel, I think he's a spokesman for the Democrat National Committee. I, he claims to be a comedian. Never seen anything funny that he does anymore. I don't know. Maybe you have. Let me know. Ratings down 15.6 percent. Yeah, over 2017, they were down then too. And 18.9 in the over and over uh, overnight ratings from Nielsen. 18.9. Now they did only monitor the 8 to 11 p.m. hours. That would be on the Eastern Time Zone. 8 to 11. I think the show was almost, or the the propaganda uh, event was about five hours long. I don't know who's going to sit there for five hours, but. 
Jimmy Kimmel, the only thing that I did hear in one of the replays this morning, I heard this one. He said, Oscar's 90, and if you and Oscar probably is watching Fox News. A whole lot more entertaining than the Academy Awards were last night from what I heard. I did uh, note that my wife was watching a little bit of it, but as soon as they announced a winner, she was able to fast forward and get past the speech. Got a pretty smart way of doing it with the Academy Awards. Unbelievable. They're, you know, they're... I, I noted also. Have you ever? Have you, did you hear any of the celebrities or these these loons after the shooting in Florida? They're all against guns. I found it fascinating that there were 500 armed security people at the event. 500. Now I don't know why they thought that they should have armed security when our kids shouldn't. Does that make any sense to anybody? I, I, if I'd love to have somebody just share with us, I've got, I noticed that we've got a bunch of folks watching right now on ronsegalradio.tv and then also on Facebook. Can somebody give me an idea on why it's good for these celebrities, the holier-than-thou crowd, the elites, yet it's not good for the kids to get security? Just love to understand the thought process behind that one. You know, I, I do seminars, we do events, Anytime you seem to have an event anywhere, you have to have security, except at a school. Figure that one out. I, I don't get that, but at least there are some sane people in Florida. I noticed the Florida Senate rejected the ban on assault weapons, and they did vote to arm teachers. That does not mean they have to mandate teachers have uh -uh, firearms. But those that want firearms, seems like it makes sense to me that as long as they are well trained and they're tested on their usage of the firearms, why not? The quicker you can get a firearm into the hand of somebody that's good, the quicker you get them out of the hand of somebody that's bad. Just the way it seems to work. But there's a lot going on in Florida. They, they want to be the leader of solving some of these problems for the school. So they're looking at, uh, at our bill that raises the minimum age to buy a rifle or shotgun to 21 from 28. I hope they have a carve out for our military men and women. What if you join the military at age 17, come back at age 20, you can't buy an assault weapon or a gun until then? Does that make any sense? $400 million in funding for schools to address mental health issues. They're putting money for every thousand students. They've got to have armed security in in florida is what this bill says seems some some logic over there amazing um i, I know you can't say this in 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 taxifornia here in the state of confusion people don't want to hear this but president trump suggested on saturday that the united states might meet with north korea as long as they denuke first why would that be a problem i'm sure that there's a lot on the left that won't like that one as well Ah, moving right along. Brown University preparing to offer a course on the White Lash, which it claims caused President Trump's election as part of pre-college program for high schoolers. I guess one more school that I wouldn't be su supporting. Brown University. Unbelievable. Isn't that what they call racism? Right? I mean, if, you, if it's the color of your skin is what's going to mandate what people are doing, I think it seems to me it doesn't make sense that if we want to have an equal world equality, how do you have it one way and not the other? But I guess I'm just a radio host out here just throwing up some ideas to, that, that seem to make sense to me. Unbelievable. We're going to continue this conversation. I'm sure as long as... I, I did watch on one of the Sunday shows, they, they had a very interesting panel, and there was two Democrats, two Republicans on the panel. And one of the panelists said to the, one of the a, a conservative panelist made the comment to one of the other panelists, very, very interesting concept. Do you want to solve the killings or do you just want to fight over guns? Fascinating conversation because there are some things that folks can agree with, but it seems like certain areas, all they want to do is fight. And why not take a little bit of what you can win on as far as win being win for the American people and let it just move forward that way? Un unbelievable. But that's just some of the fighting and the discourse that's going on in Washington right now. Unbelievable. Look at the... We're going to talk this morning. Got a lot of new laws. Uh, obviously, the tax law that went into effect 
wonder what some of those things up. Income putting you in a different tax bracket. I noticed that California and some of the other high price states, they want to make your taxes a charitable contribution. <sighs> you know better than that. <laughs> That's just because they don't want some of the higher paying tax individuals to leave the state. And they know that with all these regulations and taxing, they're probably going to do that. We're going to talk about it. Housing market expected to spring forward. Should you sign the back of your credit card? We're going to talk about that. And some of the new tax or, or some of the new laws and employment laws that are going into effect. So we're going to talk about that one as well. Maybe we'll even get a chance to talk about, and I, I shared this on some of our social media earlier today. If you're renting a room, if you're going with Airbnb or F, 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 FSO, for sale by, or not the, uh, the uh, vacation, VRBO. Do you have to make your house a ADA compliant? We're going to talk about all these and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, you know it. It's 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or com. You can connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. You know, uh, don't forget again about the Girl Scout cookies. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, I'm going to say it. I say it every morning. Shame on you. But the replay is available. Ron Siegel 1. Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We're going to be back in just a few. And I'm hoping our engineers are ready for us. There we go. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investment? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit? And the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800 1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need 
some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. I did share with you earlier today. Markets are very, very volatile. The U.S. 10-year Treasury, again, this is the Mortgage Minute, brought to you by our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage, the only one I know of, with the Fast Pass loan approval, saving you maybe ten to $50,000 on the purchase of a new home because you get to compete with same-as-cash offers. But the market's very volatile today. Now we're looking at the U.S. 10-year Treasury. That is up about two basis points. We're looking at the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. Now here it is, the bond. You remember, whatever way the bond goes, interest rates go the opposite way. It's a mathematic function. The bond is down 12 basis points. Yes, that means mortgage rates are up this morning. Let's look and see what's going on in the market to see what's making all this stuff happen. Well, it is the tariff fears. And it's really not a very logical fear. They're talking about steel and aluminum tariffs. So here's the issue. Now, I don't know what you pay for a new car. Everybody's got their own budget. Most cars are pretty expensive nowadays. But a $35,000 car with a new tariff, we're looking at about a $150 increase in the cost. That doesn't mean it's going to be an increase in what you pay, but $150. Thinking about a six-pack of beer or Coke, thinking about about a penny. Do you think that's going to have a lot of retali- a lot of, of issue there? It's going to really hurt the market, cause inflation? Now, the retaliation by other countries. There's an interesting concept. And we did hear the European Union, they're going to put, they, they're saying, well, if you do that, we're going to put a tariff on Harley Davidson's bourbon from Kentucky and Levi's. Hmm. And the administration comes back and says, okay, then maybe we'll put an additional tariff on European-made automobiles. Do you think Europe wants to get in that battle? Now, I don't know about you. I bet that we there's a lot more money in this country spent on European automobiles than there is on Levi's and bourbon. Just a thought. I might be all wet, but that's the issue. Uh, the president is talking about taking a step backward on the tariffs if there's a new NAFTA trade agreement put in place. See what happens there. We're looking at a pretty... Uh, quiet day today but starting on Wednesday the markets are going to get very very volatile with the jobs reports the February jobs reports coming out and the earnings reports coming out so we will be watching all of that for you that's the mortgage minute again brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage they're the only ones I know of with the fast pass loan approval let's chat this morning Rob Von Esch is with us Von Esch Law Group I will throw the the caveat in that I do every time Time I have an attorney on the broadcast. Actually, it's really I do this with all, with all licensees that we're giving you educational guidance. This is not legal advice. We're looking to expand your your vision a little bit. And if you want legal advice, Rob is more than happy to provide that. You got to call him at his office, make an appointment. That's how he supports his family. So let's chat this morning. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Ron. So let's chat a little bit about, uh, we got a lot to cover this morning, but new laws on employment, 2018 employment laws. What do I need to know? Well, it was uh, a very busy year for our state legislature, and there are all kinds of new uh, laws that employers and employees uh, should be aware of. So um, one of the first ones that um, I thought was interesting and is going to require some adjustment on the part of employers is that uh, Assembly Bill 1008 has now made it an unlawful practice for an employer to seek an applicant's criminal history at any time before a conditional offer of employment is made. That's a fascinating one, right? Because so basically what they're saying is the employer has to waste all their time going through a full process to find out maybe somebody's disqualified. Yes, that is that is um, what 
the effect would be and essentially you now as an employer have to revise your applications you can no longer have that section of an application that says you know have you convict been convicted of a crime or have you been arrested and to explain what the uh, offense may have been so that has to be removed from your application also you need to train your staff your staff now when they're doing the interview can no longer ask questions about have you been arrested or tell me anything you know have you been convicted of a felony those are things that you cannot ask now anymore and I think what you need to do as well is when you are advertising a position open for your company or you're conducting an interview you need to say it's subject to a conditional offer of employment is subject to passing a background check and I think the practical advice of doing that is hopefully you will weed out people that have a shady criminal history because if they know that their full offer of employment is subject to passing a background, then maybe they won't apply at all. So I think that's what you should do because this new law does allow you to look into their background once the conditional offer of employment has been made. You just can't ask about it before that. So what happens if it comes up in conversation? You know, one of the one of the the coaches or, or or organizations that I've I talk to around the country on a mastermind group, and they say, "Tell me about yourself from wh what have you been up to since high school, or tell me about your background since high school." If it comes up in a conversation along those lines, is that are you do you have to stop the conversation then? No, you wouldn't have to stop the conversation. I mean, if the employee wants to bring it up, then you know there's nothing stopping them from doing that. Or I should say, if the applicant wants to bring it up, there's nothing stopping them from doing that. You just have to be very careful as the employer uh, um, from making sure that you're not asking questions that might make the applicant feel like that what you're really asking about is their criminal history, and then they feel pressured or compelled to then begin talking about it. So. It's one of those areas of law where, one of those areas in the law where I, as an attorney that works with businesses, would just avoid that altogether. If it came up, I wouldn't continue to pursue that line of questioning in the interview. I would let it go and then deal with it later on in the background check process after the offer has been made. Because one of the things that you need to be mindful of now is that we now have the Fair Employment and Housing Council, which is setting standards in our state that um, govern whether employers are discriminating against um, certain racial groups by considering the employment history. Because what they're seeing is that there's a big gap in the amount of, let's say for example, Caucasians that have a criminal history versus African Americans or the uh, you know Latino population. So they're seeing a big disparity there. So if the crime does not impact one's ability to do the job, this council doesn't want you to consider it. And so let me give you a practical example. That'd be great. If you had a DUI, should that stop you from being a receptionist? They would say there's no relationship between the two. A DUI that you maybe had a decade ago shouldn't stop you from being a receptionist. If on the other hand, you've been convicted of grand larceny and that happened two years ago, then maybe you shouldn't be working at that job if you're going to have access to money. But if you're not going to have access to money and you're just sitting at a desk answering phones and otherwise you have no access to personal information or cash, even then it might not be relevant towards whether somebody's qualified to do, to do that job or not. So we need to be very careful as employers because the state is looking at, looking at all of us as employers to make sure that we are not freezing out certain racial groups from the workforce by considering their crimes. I say, doesn't it, you end up looking and saying at a certain point, the state almost forces you to, I mean, being that they're making us be so, so careful, you start saying, well, okay, if, if the statistics say that a specific group has a higher uh, propensity for crime, or you use the, the DUI, and I, I love that 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 evaluation or that 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 uh, example, because at one point they were looking and saying, okay, if you've got a DUI, you can't be a mortgage loan originator, you can't get that license. Okay, well, you drink too much, so you can't help somebody get a loan, but you can be a receptionist. So where do the lines cross? Right, right. You start wondering about those things. You say, okay, 
if you you know if you know that young people drink or are you know the insurance agency or, or car insurance says that young people have a higher rate of accidents so they charge higher insurance would I be in trouble if I said I, I'm, I've got a delivery company and I only want to have older people as my delivery people well you might yeah I mean, there's, <laughs> well, let me tell you you know this is basically a you know a bed of thorns that you're in if you're an employer. I mean, you have on the one hand these policies of wanting to give everyone a chance, and if that means that you have to overlook certain crimes, then so be it. And then on the other hand, you've got employers who want to keep insurance premiums down. And you know, does some, for example, if you're hiring drivers or if you have people that have access to money, might you know, insurance premiums be going up based on the risk of having these people now being on your payroll. I mean, just like for auto insurance, what what impacts your auto insurance rate as a driver, whether you have a DUI or not, right? Sure. I mean, your rates are going to go up. It's no different from the employers. Their rates go up too. So you have on the one hand, employers wanting to run a lean and efficient business as much as possible, and that might mean keeping keeping their insurance premiums down. And then yet on the other hand, the state saying, well, we don't necessarily care about that. We want you to give these other people a chance, even if that comes at greater risk and expense to you. It, it really is a you know a, a thankless job, in my opinion. Right? Am now. I in trouble if I if, if I video my interviews? Uh, you're not in trouble. I mean, but. It could it could come back to haunt you depending on what happens. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you have to really be even more cognizant of the law then, right? That's right. You better be doing it right. Interesting, fascinating stuff. It's amazing all the things that you know, and you wonder why California has the challenges we have with some of the business environment. It's because it's, you have to, you almost have to be a, a lawyer to be an employer. You do. And the law does not care if you didn't understand what the law was and it's just a mistake or ignorance in the law. That's no excuse. So you have to have a great what bottom line there is you, you have to be getting, yeah, you have to, did you do um, uh, seminars and things, Rob, so you can kind of help people with these things? I do. Okay. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. Uh, you thought I was going to give you all that information right away, huh? Nah. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, more with Rob Von Esch. We're going to also talk about the housing market. Is it going to keep on going? And should you sign the back of your credit card? I probably have a different take than what most people might say. You can reach me anytime, off air number 800 306 1990, 800 306 1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter or at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. lending team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home. You're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 3.5, and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's one 
800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Eagle Housing Lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part you still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Your Credit Matters segment today being brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has these solutions. Go to the site, sign up, get the daily update or weekly updates on how to help your credit. Should you sign the back of your credit card? Now, here's the interesting scenario here. MasterCard urges merchants in its payment network not to accept charges from customers with unsigned credit cards. Visa says that their merchants must verify that the signature on the back of the card matches the customer's signature on the transaction receipt. Discover keeps things simple. The company urges its cardholders to sign the back of their cards as soon as they activate them. American Express, basically the same. Let me ask you this question. If your credit card is stolen and it's signed on the back, do you think that the thief can copy your signature? If it's not signed on the back, can the thief copy your signature? I always wondered why in the world they want you to sign the cards so they show the thief what your signature looks like. Just a thought for you. Now you can write on there CID or check ID. I'm one, I've never signed the back of my credit card. I don't want to sign. Now I don't know of any merchants that really look at it. But just ask that question. I've never had somebody be able to give me a good uh, logical answer. Why would I want to show a thief or anybody, for that matter, what what my signature looks like on the credit card? Just a thought for you. That's your Credit Matters segment brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. We've been chatting with Rob Von Ash, Von Ash Law Firm, about... 2018 employment laws. We were talking before the break about criminal background checks. During the, during the break, Rob and I were chatting a little bit. Here's the next catch of our wonderful state because you know very few. I, I don't know how many people in the in the state legislature have ever signed the front of the check. Just kind of a curious thought, right? They they sign the back of the check in the most part. Wonder if they've ever thought about some of the different rules that Rob's talking about. What happens to the employers? I want to find out from Rob here. So I have to try and be diverse in who I hire. That's what the law says. And I don't. I, they don't want me to discriminate against uh, a, a criminal. So if I hire somebody that's got a questionable background, and then there's something that happens at my job site. Is the state going to hold me harmless? (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Great. I could have guessed that one, right? (laughs) In fact, if this was to play out in trial, let's assume that you hired somebody with uh, a history of some kind of a violent crime 10 years ago. He's fully gone through parole, demonstrated in the eyes of the law that he's completely rehabilitated himself. He's hired 
and then works successfully at the company for a couple of years and then assaults another employee. The employee turns around and sues you as the employer for putting them in harm's way by having this known person with a violent past working side by side with them. I think if you fast forward to the trial, I'm not saying the employee is going to win, but I have a feeling the judge is going to allow into evidence the fact that this person had a criminal background in the past. In other words, his criminal history will come into evidence at time of trial, and that employee that was assaulted is going to be saying to you as the employer, see, look, everyone knows that this happened. All you had to do is just do a background check, and you would have known about this guy. In fact, you did know, and you still let him work here anyway, thereby subjecting me to an undue risk and putting me in harm's way, and now this animal hurt me or this savage attacked me at uh, at the workplace. And there you are as the employer, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And, and I would assume, I, should, I shouldn't assume things, but I probably can guess being that this is the state of confusion. What happens if I make it known so that the other people can make a decision as to whether they want to stay or not stay? I don't believe you can do that. I think that would be essentially then, you know, disclosing something that... The, uh, the law kind of wants you to ignore. In other words, think about this for a minute. The state is asking you in many ways to overlook or to forgive the fact that somebody has engaged in crimes. And if you're now going to publish that to all of your employers, it seems to me that you're basically running afoul of the policies that the, st that the state is trying to implement, which is let's prevent discrimination and let's give these people a chance. You'd be getting yourself in a different type of trouble if you were to do what you're proposing, which is making everyone else aware of the risk, so to speak. So back to where, back to your original point, um, as an employer, we're damned if we do, damned if we don't. That's the way I see it. So the, the bottom line here, the the way the only way I see to protect yourself really is you know keep your corporate if you like California keep your corporate offices here and keep your employees somewhere else in a different state. Well, <laughs> yeah, good luck. You know, I mean, right? I mean, it becomes very difficult. To, how do you how do you protect yourself? It you have to be, I think, very careful in your hiring practices, and um, hopefully. You can discourage people with criminal backgrounds from applying in the first place by just simply making them aware of the fact that their conditional offer of employment is going to be subject to a criminal background check. Hopefully that keeps 50% of these people from applying in the first place. And I think it depends on what you got to also keep in mind too, what kind of industry are you in? I mean, if you're running a warehouse and all you want people doing is just lifting boxes, um, you might have to be a little bit more lenient in who you're willing to hire as your workforce for that as opposed to computer programming and you know hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year type salary jobs you know you're gonna have a different sure. applicant pool there so let me ask you to put on your Supreme Court justice hat and you know there's that super secret website that really keeps all of our backgrounds highly confidential right and if I if somebody goes to that super secret website google.com and puts in my name, right? They're going to find out what my background really is. Now, I don't know if sexual assault or DUI or some of the other criminal convictions, aren't those public record? They're public record, and that goes to the heart of what I've been saying is you're not allowed to go and look at those public records until a conditional offer of employment has been made. You're not allowed to ask about those things. Now, human nature, would you as an employer Google search somebody and look them up? I think a lot of people would. It's just that if it comes up, let's say for example a lawsuit gets filed by somebody who thinks they weren't hired because you illegally looked at that and wrongfully considered that information, um, you know, would it result in in the imposition of liability and fines against you and, of course, big attorney's fees being imposed against your company as well? I think it would. I, I really do. Even though it's public record, the whole point of the statute is you're not to be looking at those things that are public record until the conditional offer of employment has been made. And then once the conditional offer of employment is made, you can't decide not to hire them if the job and the crime you know, aren't going to be incongruous with one another. In other words, again, if it's just a DUI, wow. there's no reason not to hire that person as the receptionist. Pretty amazing stuff because I'm, I don't know anybody nowadays. Heck, when I go to do a loan for somebody, when we're consulting with people on loans, when, I, when we're consulting with agents in real estate, 
almost anything, the first thing you do is you look them up on LinkedIn, you look them up on Facebook, you look at their social footprint, and now I, 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 my bet is that there's a lot of business owners that don't know that they're not allowed to do that. And I'm not saying you can't look them up on LinkedIn. I'm not saying you can't Google them. I'm saying what you can't do is intentionally use those sources for investigating their criminal background. Unbelievable. Holy cow. Okay, what else do we have that's new in employment law? Is that the biggest? Is there, is there, are there others? Well, I, I wanted to go into the salary history inquiry. So, well, that's a nice one, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many times have we gone through interviews or interviewed other people and asked them about, well, what are your salary requirements or you know, tell me about what you've been making in prior jobs? That is now something that you are no longer allowed to ask about as well. So that is another one of those action items where you need to go and revise your employment applications and remove the salary history or the salary requirement requirements component from your application and you need to train whoever is doing the interview on behalf of your company not to ask those questions as well and instead what you're supposed to what the state wants you to do is for you to volunteer what the salary range is that you're willing to pay as the employer rather than making offers that are conditioned upon what the other employee might be willing to to work for so you're basically wasting everybody's time well, the way they look at it is you're not wasting time if you're going to publish what you're willing to pay. So those people that are willing to work for that pay will apply, and the ones that aren't won't. So I'm willing to pay somewhere between a, between $11 an hour and $1,100 an hour. Yeah, and if you do it that way, then you're definitely potentially wasting time. But it's, you know, it's like everyone knows in negotiating. The first one to throw a number out on the table loses the negotiations, right? Sure. I mean, the, oh, you always want to be the second one to then respond. You want to respond to the offer, not make the offer. So they don't want that anymore. They want the the state wants transparent transparency. They don't want employers using their implied position of power because the employee is nervous about the uh, interview and wants to get the job and will say what the employer wants to hear. So they don't want employees unduly diluting what wage they're willing to work for because they're afraid to tell the employer what they really want. Seems crazy to me. Some people just want a job, right? I mean, and, and they're more than willing to do whatever they need to do, you know, with, that's moral and ethical and, and what well, you were hoping legal, right? But the government uh, doesn't seem to like that idea. We're going to talk more with Rob Von Esch when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. Housing market expected to spring forward. We'll talk about that one as well. You can reach me anytime. Off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsiegelradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three-minute complimentary survey and the area-trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S I E.
TheGELendingTeam.com or 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. Great subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRENMLS 217037 and 145502 and CalBRE 01869452 and one eight six six. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The real time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted experts of Ron Siegel Radio. Text TOOLKIT to 79564, TOOLKIT to 79564. Get the ultimate home finance toolkit free. Housing market expected to spring forward this year. Just like our clocks this weekend in the majority of the country, the housing market will soon spring forward. Similar to tension in the spring, the lack of inventory available for sale in the market right now is what is holding back the market. Many potential sellers believe that waiting until spring is in their best interest, and traditionally they would have been right. Buyer demand has seasonality to it, which usually falls off in the winter months, especially in areas of the country impacted by Arctic temperatures and conditions. Yeah, it's been cold around here lately, hasn't it? That hasn't happened this year. Demand for housing has remained strong as mortgage rates have remained near historic lows. Even with the recent increases in rates, buyers are still able to lock in an affordable monthly payment. Many more buyers are jumping off the fence and into the market to secure a lower rate. The National Association of Realtors recently reported that the top 10 date sellers listed their homes in 2017 all fell in April, May, or June. And those who act quickly and list now could benefit greatly from additional exposure to buyers prior to the flood of competition. Let's chat. If you're thinking about it, I'll put together a game plan for you and introduce you to the people you need to know. That's the real-time real estate segment. Brought to you by the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio Text Toolkit. The 79564. Continuing our conversation this morning, we're talking with attorney Rob Von Esch. We are talking about some of the employment laws. And there's a, it's been pretty fascinating to me. State of California just says don't be an employer, basically. Otherwise, you're in trouble. So that's the, the simple process here. But, you know, uh, the, this Me Too movement, Rob, it's kind of been the talk of the town for the last six months. And I noticed that last week Harvey Weinstein's firm filed bankruptcy. Are there any tax issues that we're looking at? How's, how's that affecting any of this stuff? Well, there is a change in the tax code, and it's actually called the Harvey Weinstein tax. <laughs> so the Internal That's, Revenue that Code... That maintains its popularity. Yeah, right? Uh, the Internal Revenue Code, Section 162, actually prohibits the amount of any sexual harassment settlement and the attorney's fees paid in connection therewith from being deducted as a business expense if a confidential settlement agreement has been used. Now, this is actually a very big change in the law for a business owner because typically when a sexual harassment lawsuit is settled, I would say more than 99% of those settlement agreements are subject to a confidentiality clause. In fact, I would say in my in my experience, more than 95% of any type of um, employee related settlement, whether it's a wage an hour or it's some other you know retaliation or age discrimination, you name it, is subject to a confidentiality clause because the whole thing that the employer is buying 
is peace of mind and just resolution. And what they don't want is for this person who was paid a settlement to then go around and broadcast to the world, I just got X amount of dollars. And then you know now it's an avalanche of lawsuits against the employer for people looking for the same thing. But I think this, t this new tax code is going to potentially have a very chilling effect on how we're going to see these sexual harassment claims resolved. Because if I can't keep it quiet anymore and at the same time take the business the, the business deduction for the expenses, is it worthwhile for a settlement or should I just see it through in court and then have it resolved there where everything is deductible to the company? Because if it goes to trial or there's a judgment rendered in an arbitration, for example, uh, that then still remains something that is a deductible business expense. And we're talking about expenses to companies that are quite large. I mean, easily one of these lawsuits can cost a company well over $250,000. That is an expense most businesses would want to take. Sure. So then the, and then you throw that a 50% tax or a 40% or 20 21 percent tax whatever on top of it you have to look at that but i think that you're right i, I was going to ask you that i mean as you're talking about that it would seem to me it would make more sense just to go to court and and air all the dirty laundry and try and and uh, um i guess you're gonna you almost defame both parties well, right or or throw everything on the table you know it wasn't you know she wanted it or or whatever or he wanted it, whatever the whole thing. It, it it could create a situation where you're going to see more of these claims getting litigated than settled. And if that's good, then you know you've got a different idea of what's good in, than than what I do. I think it's better just to you know quickly do what's right and make these claims go away. I mean, obviously the ideal answer is just don't put yourself in that situation sure. to begin with. But let's face it. Humans are always going to be humans, and these things, if you're an employer, are going to happen. You're going to have employees make mistakes, and sexual harassment is just going to be one of those things that's going to continue to happen. Well, the, the, and this whole issue, because in Harvey Weinstein's case, that's a, he was the business owner. He was the business, right? Right. Now, what if you've got a, you know, you're, it's a United Airlines, and it's somebody 15 levels down the chain of command? Which is what that's most companies. Yeah, that's a a very odd scenario. Got a weird sound coming through me, guys. Oh well, we'll we'll figure this out. Yeah, that's a that's a that's kind of a, a fascinating. I want to throw a quickie at you, Rob, uh, um, and I'm going to throw you on the spot here a little bit because I know you mentioned this on Friday, and I, I kind of shared with some of our our um, social media channels that we might talk about this. The ADA. And the Airbnb issues. Do you think that you know now that we're we're getting involved with more and more daily rental? I shouldn't just say Airbnb, but daily rental because you got the VRBO, you've got the Airbnb, you've got the private rent daily rental services. Is the ADA going to get involved in this? Do you think? You know, there was a law that just came down for commercial landlords that said if you're going to be renting at your commercial property, you've got to disclose whether it is. CASP certified or not, and that's Certified Access Specialist Certified, which is part of the mechanism of complying with ADA, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act. So you can hire this CASP specialist to come in and say the property is ADA compliant, or if it's not, these are the things that have to be done to make it ADA compliant. Now what was interesting in this law change is their definition, the state's definition of what a commercial property is. And specifically within their definition they said motels and hotels are properties that have a similar, a similar characteristic. Now you tell me what the major difference is between a motel, for example, that offers no room service or any kind of amenities other than you can check in and watch TV and sleep in the bed and use the property, and an Airbnb. In fact, some of these Airbnbs or VRBOs might have more amenities than a motel would. So I think based on that definition, it is not a stretch at all to start seeing the legislature moving towards making VRBO and Airbnb properties ADA compliant. Interesting. Well, the only the biggest difference I would see is the number of units available, right? Even if you've got a, you know, even if you're talking about Tom Bodet's place, right? He's usually got more than one room. He does, but if you're now looking at the reality of VRBO and Airbnb, it's all on a website that has 
thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, or millions of rooms available worldwide. So if you're looking at it that way, perhaps the Airbnb and the VRBR, the Airbnb or the VRBO hotel, so to speak, is far bigger than Tom's ever was. Interesting. You know, something. It's amazing. That, that that's why you're the attorney, and I'm not, right? I mean, that, that's a good good thought because you just never have a clue which way they're going to go. And and the only thing we do know for sure is in California, it's going to go against the business owner. California is a tough place. It's a great place to live. It's a tough place to run a company. Yeah, exactly. Well, according to U.S. News and World Report, I mean, they said it's the number 50 state in the country. So that's. Uh, but we still love our weather, and uh, even though it's a little chilly out today. That's right. I mean, we're both sitting here in short sleeve shirts, you know, in the beginning of March. Right. We didn't have to worry about a nor'easter today. Right. I didn't have to shovel the car you know, out of exactly. the snowy driveway. Great information, as always. If you want more information from. Our, our friend, attorney Rob Von Ash, give me a call, 800. Marvin, let, give me a call. I'll uh, put you in touch with Rob. He's a great guy to know. Um, give me a call at any, any of you, 800-306-1990. Don't forget about our Girl Scout cookies. We're still selling those. And uh, the chapter there is going to be looking forward to that. We might probably have a, a contest. If you buy five boxes of Girl Scout cookies, we'll put you in a contest for a free Starbucks gift card. Then you can buy a sixth box. You eat the cookies and have a cup of coffee. And remember, set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio or, or call us anytime at 800-306-1990. And uh, if you want to meet any of our guests, uh, give me a call. Again, 800-306-1990. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to, to John, who's engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, any questions, call me. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.